And so with that, we'll take a look at our model equation for 2D, and it's going to be the same kind of deal uh, that we did in 1D. We're going to kind of pick a very generic model equation, and then you'll see that you know by choosing the data in a certain way and specializing it that we can this equation will govern several types of physical problems including like I said the kind of groundwater uh, flow and permeable media that we're interested in uh, in the pressure tr transport problem So there's our model problem, and you know you'll see that this part here is nothing more than the divergence of uh, you know some tensor A uh, grad mu, right? So this looks very familiar. This this part. So it should be obvious, but u is a function of x and y. The AIJ are the data. And we have some boundary conditions that we're not specifying yet, but we'll talk about in a minute. And so this equation, of course, it, it models um, heat transfer in 2D irrotational flow of an ideal fluid and you know what we're most interested in groundwater it doesn't have to necessarily be water, of course, but in this class, it's really all we're talking about, uh, a single phase fluid anyway. It also models torsion of cylindrical members, magnetostatics, membranes, uh, but we won't worry about all that stuff. So we'll just write down uh, or show the weak form here, or develop the weak form, rather. So we're going to kind of take, it's just the same procedure. We're going to multiply by a test function, integrate over the domain. Test function will be this del u. Going to rewrite. The term inside the parentheses here is F1, and the second one is F2 for the time being. So And now we're going to integrate by parts. To move some of the differentiation onto the test function, we'll use the following identity.
I'm also going to write down the divergence theorem. We've used it before uh, when we were developing the equations of motion, mass, momentum, and energy early in the class. But in the context of the equations we're using here, we can transform this area integral into a line integral times, uh, times the normal vector to the line. and then y. I guess I shouldn't use the hats because they're components. Our components of the unit normal. talking about 2D here. And that's on the boundary. We use this gamma, big gamma sign for the boundary of, say, an element. And so, using those identities, we have that And we're going to define, so sorry, that took me a while to write that down. But anyway, that's, that's the weak form. And this, this term shows up through the integration by parts. And we're going to define this. So we're going to define it as Qn. So finally, we have. So that's our final weak form. And if we want to write it in variational form, then we know that we group the terms that are del u and u together. For a bilinear operator. So that's the bilinear operator and L is what's left, things in terms of del U only. So if A is a symmetric tensor, so A21 equals A212, then we can write the quadratic functional for this guy.
And if we introduce a, a vector form of this guy, we can write things much more compactly. So, we're going to let C equal the coefficient matrix. and D equal a vector of the differential operators. Then we can write So this is just that previous equation written uh, in terms of these vectors. Same thing here. Without writing it out. So finally, the kind of most compact way we can express it as so. This is also the weak form, or the bilinear form, variational form.